Have you ever wondered how properties get made, how construction sites get developed, how buildings and skyscrapers rise out of the ground? Well, that's what we're talking about today. My name is Jason Hunt. I'm a professional AutoCAD trainer, and I run the only land survey drafting program in the world. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about what is land surveying and how you guys can actually capitalize and make over six figures drafting inside of it. So if you have a little bit of CAD skills, this is a great industry to get into because it is fully untapped. There's not a lot of people that know about this, and so therefore there's a lot of uh, gain to be made. So let's jump into this. So what is survey drafting? Well, survey drafting is drafting for surveying. If you ever see those guys that work out in the field that have those big tripod things with a little camera, well, that's actually equipment that takes up GPS points and then puts them into a file that us drafters can then process. And what's really cool about this is that they give you detailed notes and they give you these points and your job is to basically just connect the dots. So if you've ever seen one of these little, uh, you know, connectable drawings where you go ahead and sketch by connecting from dot one to, you know, let's say 65. This is honestly what you're going to be doing exactly inside of land surveying. We're connecting the dots of different features that exist out in the real world. And there's a little bit more to it. But for the most part, this is how surveys get made. So here's why surveying is such a great opportunity. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that surveying happens everywhere. If something exists out in the real world, odds are that it has been surveyed in some way shape or form. And that's all surveying is, is we're taking what exists out in the real world and we're putting it on paper. And there's a little bit of finesse that happens to it. But uh, the thing is, is that this work is always available and it's never going anytime soon. So the demand grows even more in cities. It also exists out in rural areas for developing rural properties. Um, simply put, surveyors are always going to be needed. And therefore, people that work underneath surveyors are also always going to be needed. What's cool about this is that it might sound complicated, but um, the qualifications are actually quite low. The barrier of entry to get into surveying is very low. There are a little couple things that you have to do, but once you get past that point, the door is wide open for you. So you don't need a college degree. There's really no you know, heavy lifting or experience that you need to get started. And so uh, for the most part, it's a really straightforward technical career that works out for most people. And so here's what you're actually going to need to get started working in surveying. First up is going to be some computer literacy, uh, considering that we do survey drafting all on the computer, no field work. We don't lift anything heavy. We're not digging holes. We're doing everything uh, either in an office or from the comfort of our home, you're going to need some good basic computer skills because that's what we do. Number two is going to be some attention to detail. Projects like these are quite expensive. And so we want to make sure that we comb through all of the drawings so that way our clients are happy with it because, well, they pay good money for it. And finally, willingness to learn. Um, surveying is not that difficult to get into. There is a little bit of a barrier to entry, but if you can understand and pick up the theory behind it, the actual doing in CAD actually comes together quite easily. So here's what you're actually going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and that's when you're going to be drafting and surveying. And so for the most part, you're going to be working inside of CAD. Uh, it's just like working in any sort of other program, Microsoft Paint, Excel, just takes a little bit of time to get used to. The data that you get in from the field, you're going to process that every single morning. And then by the middle of the day, it's kind of like a puzzle piece. You're going to be putting these lots together and figuring out where things are based on legal descriptions and uh, you know legal plats. And the math is all there. You punch it all in the computer. And then basic drafting and drawing skills, fitting this together, is going to get you that uh, survey finalized. Next thing is going to be double checking your work. You want to go over what it is that you did. And then finally, by the end of it, you give it to the licensed surveyor and submit it for review. Um, if your drawing comes back good, that's going to be signed and sealed by the licensed surveyor, and it's going to go out the door to the client. And if there's any revisions, well, you just go ahead and fix those revisions and send it right back. And that's really all you're going to be doing. For the most part, if you have a computer uh, and you know you know what you're doing on a computer, you're going to be just fine in getting into this field and bringing these drawings to life you know, from the real world and bring it to life on the computer. So here's how we're going to get started. And this is a very simple path. I like to kind of split it up into three different directions. Number one is going to be learning. Number two is going to be practicing. And then finally, number three is going to be earning. To get into this field, you have to obviously learn the field. The major three things are going to be geomatics, surveying theory, and the public land system. Once you get that down, that's going to take you about 30 days to understand the CAD software, to understand specifically what you're doing in this field. Now, again, one thing I want to make very clear, if you know CAD skills, that doesn't mean that you can just walk in and start working in surveying. You have to understand the actual theory behind it. So then once you start working on these jobs, you understand the why of what it is that you're doing as far as fitting that puzzle piece together. Now, secondly, is going to be getting some practice. Um, working on actual files is very important. You can actually look up online data from either county clerk of courts, plats, and just practice drawing these things. And this is going to give you enough experience to sort of build a mock portfolio. If you can actually get in contact with a licensed surveyor and say, hey, listen, I would love if you could share me some of your data or even some mock data so you can practice on survey jobs, because what's really important is getting in that CSV data, that's the actual GPS data, 
into your computer so you can kind of flesh out and finalize one of these drawings. You can get about halfway through with just public data, but at a certain point, you're going to need real survey data from out in the field to really make a finalized portfolio and project. And then finally, the last thing to do is do the real work. You know, once you put it in practice, that's where the magic's going to happen. Um, you can reach out to local surveying firms, either as a freelance basis, you can go work for them in office, and they're going to give you this data every single day, and you're going to do exactly the exact same thing. But finally, you're going to get paid for it. And so the pay is quite nice in this. But being able to show that you can do quality work and actually have attention to detail is really big. But then also the process of it. One of the cool things in surveying is that most of these surveyors aren't even at the level when it comes to drafting. They didn't grow up with CAD. And so if you're a good CAD drafter and you can showcase and implement really good processes and services, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to um, move their company along. And it shows great value, not as opposed to you know, just the work that you're going to be doing, but also the other steps that you're going to provide for them, which is going to be, you know, set up and potentially training on that end and just building out a system where their drafts get pushed along even faster from start to finish. So let's talk money. I know this is very important for you guys. And I want to outline what it's going to look like for you from beginning into this industry, um, you know, a couple months down the road, and then finally a few years. Uh, for starters, right, if you are already working in surveying and you work out in the field or you are a drafter, there's better opportunities for you to go freelance. But for people starting out, you can make anywhere between three to $7,000 a month simply drafting inside of this field, whether you're working in office uh, or freelance. It's really solid income and you're going to enjoy the stability of regular paychecks if you're working inside of the office, but you're also going to get benefits uh, like any normal job. Most surveying companies have really good benefits simply because it's like an overarching umbrella. If you work out in the field, that's a dangerous job. Um, and so therefore you need like high benefits and coverage for insurance. And so usually survey companies provide that. But the thing is, they're not going to change the insurance policy from one person in the company to another. So if you work in the office and you're doing very low risk stuff like drafting at the computer, you're still going to have that carry over the exact same benefits. So the benefits are really fantastic in most survey companies. And so next up is going to be, uh, you know, freelancing. The earning potential is actually quite larger when you're first starting out simply because you can charge a rate that you want. It should be similar in the beginning stages uh, because you're kind of getting your legs together and you're getting a couple clients, you're getting those projects through the door. Uh, but for the most part, you know, your first few months is about getting your foot in that door and starting a connection with those clients and then finally building from there. After some experience, so about six months in, um, you have a couple projects under your belt, your price should be increasing. And if you're a freelancer, you can expect to make anywhere between six to $9,000 a month. Now this is gonna be a combination of projects and I really recommend that you do them by the project as opposed to hourly. Typically, you'll make a lot more money um, you know, calculated hourly, but this way you're gonna have some confidence in your skills. You're gonna be able to you know, provide external services and there's always really cool ways that you can upsell inside of surveying. One of which is gonna be building out templates for people, doing something called field to finish where that line work comes in and connecting those dots, have the computer teach it how to automatically do that. That's a huge way that you can get some extra pay. And then finally, uh, freelancing, this is the point where you're gonna start having recurring clients. And for these licensed surveyors, that's what's so cool, that's what's so cool about it is that the, the work that you do is always going to be recurring. You work with a survey, you might potentially work with them for multiple years, but now you get on a basis with them where they understand you can start handling a lot more jobs from them, a lot bigger projects, a lot more expensive projects, so therefore your pay should reflect. And finally, by the end of this, what's going to look like is that you can be making over $10,000 a month with your CAD skills inside of this industry. And this is simply because you can choose from the projects that pay the best but you also have a couple new opportunities and that's going to be starting your own survey drafting firm. This is exactly what I did. My bread and butter, I hired college students who are in engineering, they know CAD, I taught them the surveying. And then from there, I was able to build a business off of this where they're working for me, I get clients coming in, they work for said clients and they sit in my office and I get paid for it. And so scaling up is really a great thing that you can do because it's the exact same work. Now you just have more people doing it for you. What's cool about the surveying part is that for types like this, I would just get one client and have one employee drafting for that client. And so this way is very streamlined. There's only one direct avenue of communication. And so there's really not a lot of confusion that can occur because you have less clients simply because of the nature of serving as compared to other industries. And then you have less employees, but they're able to get done a lot more work because they understand the client's needs and they can kind of build from there. And this is what allows you to, you know, build up that company and kind of expand, or you can work remotely. And so working remotely, have two to three licensed surveyors that you work for, you'll make well over $100,000 a year, more than $10,000 a month. And this way you can provide quality work, uh, draft from a you know a nice gaming laptop, and you should pretty much be good to go. So here's why people love this career. Number one, it's really stable. Uh, whether you're freelancing or you're working in office, 
This is a uh, career that's never firing. There's never any layoffs. They're always expanding simply because there's not enough people that know how to do this. And so even as a freelancer, you still enjoy those same benefits because the types of clients you get are highly recurring. You might have them for multiple years. It's really comfortable, number two. Um, this is a great career field to work in simply because there's no manual labor. You're not doing any heavy lifting. You're drafting on the computer. It's really quite chill. And then finally, it's very satisfying. The work that we do is really fantastic. Um, I find it very stimulating. There's a lot of differences between jobs every single time, but there's a lot of similarities. And so you have comfort in knowing that you know what you're doing, but then also the challenge of working on something a little bit more difficult as far as a project goes, the puzzle is always going to be uh, a little bit different every single time. And you know, your skills are going to grow alongside with your income. And this is the perfect choice for someone who's looking for a comfortable environment, something that's stable and is satisfying to work with where they're going to be able to do it for very, very many years to come good longevity, even if you're young or if you're old, if you're getting in this industry, there's never been a better time to start. So here's your next steps for getting started. Um, one of the coolest things about land surveying is that it's one of the easiest jobs to get started in. Um, for example, all you're going to need to do is learn the basics of the CAD software. If you already know that, great, fantastic. Next up is going to be understanding some simple survey terms and really understanding the theory behind it. And then finally, you're going to have to practice and get some real world examples in either from public data or from reaching out to surveyors and getting some private data from them to work on some mock, mock projects or projects for them. Hopefully you'll be getting paid for it by then. Um, then from there, you have a couple different opportunities that you can do. You know, If you don't wanna waste time going in circles, a uh, structured course could be an absolute game changer for you. It's gonna save you a lot of time when it comes to scratching your head on what you need to do for each particular part. And this is just gonna move things along uh, a lot more quickly. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, I have created the only program in the world that walks you through every single step of the process. It's dedicated for beginners. And by the end of it, you'll have skills to not only start your portfolio, but land jobs inside of this industry from the get go. And if you like this video and enjoy the information and you want to learn more about surveying, CAD drafting and freelancing, shoot me a follow on Instagram and shoot me a follow here on YouTube. Thanks.